Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Today we would be covering a video which is hedge accounting interest rate options. And this we are covering using, uh, uh, you know, uh, IFRS 9, right? Uh, you know that uh, this interest rate disbursement strategy which we have, again this is not possible in India because what is what, what we are going to discuss here. So the strategy which we have, this generally banks are using and uh, generally any the interbank markets are getting used like one bank is selling one bank is buying so that way here let's take an example of Barclays Barclays Bank suppose Barclays Bank is having an interest rate expense how Barclays is going to save it they are going to bind the cap let me write completely buying an interest rate cap and here they are going to be selling an interest rate floor. This collectively is known as interest rate collar. Now take it other way, Barclays is having an interest income. Then they are going to be buying an interest rate floor and they are going to be selling an interest rate cap. Now this is again, this is again interest rate flow. Sorry, interest rate caller. But the point is very simple. The point which we should need to understand and which we need to appreciate and we need to do is that whether both, whether uh, this is uh, an interest rate caller expense and this is interest rate caller income, right? Let me write that way, whether it is an interest rate caller whether it is an expense or whether it is an income they both are going to be of two types as per hedge accounting sorry as per our foreign exchange norm either they are paid or they are zero cost which is also known as zero cost callers either they are going to be paid or they are going to be zero cost now the point of contention is how you would do the hedge accounting of that here we are talking about interest rate and and of course one thing I which uh, missed to mention is that they can be further of two types they can be done on fixed rate or they can be done on floor, float, floating rate now the point of contention is very clear and the point of contention is that how we are going to do the hedge accounting of that. Now the interest which you are paying, right, the interest which you are paying or which you are receiving, like let us draw a simple PNL, which is debit and credit. If you are paying expense here, if you are receiving income here, right, now this is going to generate a revaluation exposure. Because here we are assuming that the interest which you are doing is a floating currency, uh, is, a, is, a, is not your functional currency or it's a foreign currency. That is going to, gen that is going to generate a uh, revaluation exposure here, either here or here. Plus, whether it is a fix or it is a float, the hedging cost is, uh, the, the, there is a certainty that one month you are above the market, one month you are, you are below the market. So the hedging is also on the company. And of course, this is one part of hedging. Now, one part of hedging. If you collectively look, either I, I, either it is an interest or an income, which is in a functional currency, which is in a foreign currency, then that is going to generate an exposure which is known as fair value hedging exposure. And in this exposure, it is up to a company. 
and in this exposure it is up to a company how they are taking it right are they taking it on the onshore or are they taking of the offshore if they want they can has this on onshore if they want they can has this on offshore also offshore means singapore new york london luxembourg and so on so forth this is something which we clearly need to understand the accounting standard ifrs 9 which is fair valuation of uh, which is which is financial derivatives they permit both the callers paid callers and zero cost caller but at the same time they also telling you one thing if it is a paid caller of course that is going to come in the debit side of the pnl but that supposed to be amortized you need to amortize that that is something which we need to appreciate that if it is a paid caller either it is an expense or it is an income you supposed to amortize that over the period of the time right that is a separate part which we are not currently discussing that we are going to be which we are going to be discussing in that you know which is a compound liability sometimes what would happen you would have a compound liability also or a compound income also in the case of compound liability what would happen like this there is a hard call period you know which is this let me draw it or let me draw this there is a hard call period here also now in this compound liability what would happen you know that there is a hard call period in both the cases whether it is an income or whether it is an expense but what you are but you are going to do you are going to take the consolidate you the once you going to do the hedge you are going to take the complete hedge so in the hedging position you will cover the non compounding period also so you you will cover the complete period you will cover the complete period you, you cover the hard call period you cover the non hard call period and this is in turn known as this in turn is known as compound uh, compound derivatives which we are covering also in the next video the purpose of this video is to let you know that under ifrs 9 especially in the interest rate callers such kind of structures are possible you can create an interest rate caller in expense you can create an interest rate caller in income If you are creating an expense, this is the buying and cap, selling a floor. If you are creating an income, this is buying a floor and selling a cap. It could be of two types. It could be paid or it could be float. Uh, sorry, it could be paid or it could be zero cost. Zero cost is also known as zero cost callers, and fixed rate and the floating rate. That is the two types. So total four, two into two, four, and collectively this is known as fair value hedging. Now the last part of that, the mark to market of the fair value hedges. is always ineffective in nature so what would happen i'm taking the joint i'm taking out uh, i'm taking if the mark to market come here which is m to m right the um, m to m come here and fx fx loss will come here then you would have revaluation gain which would come here or take it other way if there would be a reval loss then you would have mark to market you don't know where it would go it could go on the debit side it could go on the negative side and then you would be having fx gain here since this is a form of the fair value hedge all the mark to market would be ineffective in nature and other comprehensive income is having no role to play as a company you cannot put the mark to market or or uh, in the other comprehensive income you have to take this in the pnl either on the credit side or on the debit side that is something which we need to understand you are always welcome to contact us at www.tragiconsulting.in my mobile is 9899242978 skype id is rahul5327 and my email is rahul.magan@tragiconsulting.in and before winding up this video we are very pleased to share that we have been valued at a pre money valuation of 4 and 1/2 million dollars Now, Treasury Consulting LLP is is available on all the venture capitalist platform. We are very well available on AngelList. We are available on the Gust now, which is the largest web largest venture capitalist platform. There are more VC platforms which are on the way. Hopefully, by December, when this year would end, we would be able to present ourselves more than five or six VC platforms. And currently, if I go, if I'm not wrong, more than twenty thousand venture capitalists are in our contacts now. a only on the angel list so with the period of the time we would be connecting with lot of angels lot of venture capitalists and all you always welcome to contact us we keep sharing our videos 
and I'm extremely proud to uh, proud and thank you to somebody uh, to to the Lord to give you that the next video which is coming this is the 350th video of our channel and with this we are the we are now turning the second channel on the YouTube second largest channel on the YouTube in terms of videos in terms of subscriber base we are still very less we just have 205,000 uh, 2500 subscribers in terms of videos we would be the number second channel on the YouTube in terms of technical videos because there are many channels those who must be greater than 350 videos but you understand that there are a lot of other channels also which I should not mention right but this is complete technical video channel so with this we are moving towards and we expecting that by July we would cross 450 and by December we would be roughly 650 or 700 in between. Thank you and have a great day.